Welcome everybody to the class. I, I have been asked to speak about missions and Pastor Schaller has given me a list of things that he wants me to talk about. So I will read you the list and then I'll talk. <laughs> and, 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 and actually I have been requested to talk about um, the need for leadership, making leaders, having a vision, being a disciple, growing, activity in the local church, commitment. So that's quite a package there. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff, but uh, I've been praying about this class and, and I feel very pri privileged that I'm here with you and I have been in this kind of setting many times in the history of our ministry and I know what can happen in a classroom setting like this. I know how this can be a time when we hear things from God, whatever it is, whatever it does in our lives, maybe it moves us, maybe it keeps us settled where we are. That's not the issue. The issue is that we want to hear from God, and, and I'm excited about that. And I want us to turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 3, and I just want to read verses 5, 6, and 7 from 1 Corinthians 3. And this is a good introduction for the theme of leadership. Um, this kind of puts the theme of leadership to its place. And we read from 1 Corinthians 3, from verse 5. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So, with other words, what do we learn from this passage about leaders? We learn that they are nothing, right? Anything, nothing. That's what it means. And isn't that amazing that a leader is nothing? But why is it so difficult to be nothing? That's a good question. Like if it means that if that's what it means to be a leader in a spiritual sense, that you're nothing, then why is it so difficult to be a spiritual leader? It's because we are something. That's why. Because we have something, because we know something, and we don't want to give it up. But if you really are called to be a leader or to discern leadership and understand in any capacity, you know, being a leader to your little brother or in your family or, or in a Bible study or in a church or, you know, even in, in the secular setting, um, being a leader, if you ask God, God, can you teach me how to be a leader? You're actually asking God, can you teach me how to be nothing? And God will faithfully teach you. God has his ways to teach you how to be nothing and in the same time be really like God because this is so amazing about man is that even though we have fallen so far from God's plan in the same time we are very close to God and I thought about this how man is so advanced in so many ways and has progressed in so many ways and and I thought about this if man could create a robot that uh, that would disobey him like um, and man can do that but the disobedience of the robot would be only that much as the man will program into that even that is or this obedience would be regulated by man right but this is the difference between man and God because when God created man he didn't 
regulate our disobedience. He didn't put a program in us. I know there is a whole theological debate about this, how much there is like, you know, and even with, with Islamic setting, there is a lot of this, this uh, speculation about predestination. What does it cover exactly? But I'm sure about this, that, that God did not plan or design disobedience and he doesn't regulate it in us. We have so much power, we have so much opportunities, we have so amazing dimensions that are given from God and God is freely giving them to us. And it, it's, it's really amazing and, and when you think about biblical or spiritual um, understanding of leadership, I think that this is the key issue. It is that uh, that we can be like God. And when we speak about leadership, spiritual leadership, we are actually speaking about God-likeness. That's the best quality in man. The best qualities in man's character and in his behavior is God-likeness. Every time when I forgive, I am like God. It's so powerful. And it's, we should not have a debate about it. There's no compromise about it. I should be fast in forgiveness. Because when I forgive, I'm really like God. Which is amazing. That's, that's when we are healthy. That's when we are right on. When we are like God. Because we are supposed to be like him. God thinks that we can be like him. That's the message in the word of God. And every time when I lay down my life, I am like God. I lose my life, my rights, my, know, my abilities, my, my comforts, and so on for someone else. That's when I'm like God. When I love sacrificially, I'm like God. When I give without expecting anything in return, I'm like God. When I take the blame, I'm like God. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like those are very real, very practical issues and very practical situations in our daily life. And this is what we look for in leadership. Jesus said in Matthew 11:29 that, take my yoke upon you. He kind of said that, hook up with me. Yoke is, this is a double yoke. It's not just that I take his yoke and try to, but I'm, I'm yoked up with him. So wherever he goes, I go. That's what it means. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And then he says, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. He doesn't say, learn from me because I'm powerful. I have everything under control. He doesn't say, learn from me because I'm omniscient. I know all the answers. But he says, learn from me because I'm gentle. He re reveals something amazing about the character of God. Something that really takes all eternity for us to learn. And when we speak about spiritual leader and leadership, I want to just make comments and, and maybe this material is not so organized and don't worry about that. I'm just talking and 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 making comments on some of the issues about leadership what is a spiritual leader like and and the first thing that i want to say is that a spiritual leader is the one who cares caring is something that characterizes a spiritual leader i was once listening to a young pastor speak in a church and he was very angry at people, and that happens sometimes. You know, we get angry. I mean, we get angry in our daily life, at our job. Also, pastors sometimes get angry, and he was very angry, and he was speaking about doctrine, and he said, then he said, and this is how it is, and if you don't like it, there's the door. And then he said, and then you can go wherever you want, and I don't care. And the last sentence was a bad one. 
when I heard that. I, I mean, I, everything else I could take even. But this, when he said, I don't care, that's the last thing you want to hear from a pastor. If you're sitting there and I say, okay, this man doesn't care what happens to me. He doesn't care if I believe a heresy. He doesn't care if I go to a bad place. What kind of shepherd is he? Is God this way that God said, okay, go ahead, I don't care. No, he cares. And I think about two situations in the Bible where people kind of express that. One is when the disciples are in the storm and Jesus is sleeping uh, in the boat and, and then they wake him up and... And they're really concerned because, uh, because uh, Jesus seemingly didn't care. And they say in, in Mark 4, 38, they wake him up and they, they say, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That was their concern. They were fishermen. Of course, this storm was probably a demonic storm and it was beyond their control and they understood that they cannot handle it. But after all, they were in their familiar environment but they were afraid of this one thing, that Jesus would not care. And the same happened with Martha. You remember when Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and, and, and being a good listener and, and caring for the words of God, and Martha was working. And then Martha comes and, and in Luke uh, 10, verse 40, and she is really kind of concerned, and she says, Lord... Don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? And this was Martha's desire that Jesus would care for her. Not that she had problems, you know, serving. I always say that Martha looks like she was that kind of a woman that she could run a little village. I mean, she had no problems with the practical issues or working hard. But this, is what, this was her concern. And she said, don't you care that my sister has left me? Don't you care? Jesus, don't you see me? Martha, me. Jesus, look at me. I'm here too. Like, and isn't that the cry of human heart? Like, you know, that God would see me. God, God would know me, my name. It's so beautiful in the Bible when it says that God calls us by, by our name. Like that, that, what could be, I mean, think about your own name and God pronouncing it. Like that's like there's nothing more amazing than that. And that's the way how he cares, that he knows my name. And, and in spiritual leadership, this is uh, powerful. When, when Jesus spoke with Peter in Matthew, I mean John 21, in verse uh, 15, he said, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, care for my lambs, you know. Take care of them. Take care of them. Feed my lambs. This is spiritual leadership. It's about caring. You know, if you really want to punish someone, like, you know, the most powerful way to punish someone is to show them no interest. Indifference. It's powerful. Haven't you tried it? I have. You know, it works very well. If you really are angry at someone and you want to really punish them, then t don't talk to them. Just like, you know, don't pay any attention to them. It kills, it kills them. <laughs> it's horrible. Indifference. And this is not God's characteristic. And it's not really a characteristic that a spiritual leader could continue ministering with. It's uh, God cares, God is interested and it's amazing, like today I was speaking with someone about like um, how funny it is, like I, I, I saw this, uh, you know, some Yahoo special or something, you know, about the, about the black holes, how they had, they were showing this amazing show, how there were these explosions and they were like, the dimensions were so incredible. And, and when I lo looked at it first time, I said to myself, wow, that's like so incredible that why would I resist sin? Like, why would I resist temptation in my own life? Or does it really matter what I say when you look at these unbelievable dimensions in outer space there and you just say, like, <laughs> like, 
you know, I should not be, you know, caring about my own personal sanctifi sanctified life or because there are black holes. <laughs> you know, it's like so, it's so crazy. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, that how, why would God be interested in my little life? But that's the message of the Bible. I mean, we have names. Bible is full of names. It's not just full of numbers, case number one, case number two, case. It's full of names. And all those names mean something, and God relates to them, and Jesus knew them personally and grew and changed in, the, in, in his relationship with them. It's amazing. God is very concerned, and that's how we are when we are in the place of representing that kind of authority and leadership then we have that concern and care and 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 i uh, was just sharing with someone today about how i came to the ministry and and i remember from the first meeting when i came you know i had my my luggage with me and and i had all kinds of concepts and ideas and and disappointments and so on but when pastor shadow was speaking you know during the message what happened is that that he took an eye contact with me. He looked at me during the message, and he loved me. And in that moment, I said to myself, that man cares for my soul. Like, this man cares for me. And I sensed that kind of healthy spiritual leadership. I needed that. I needed someone who would be interested in me in the way how God is interested in me. Second thing that I want to mention about spiritual leader is that a leader is called to suffer. Um, I don't want this to sound strange or anything, but it is actually very strange. <laughs> it's kind of very real because um, true leadership and 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 uh, you know it's. The way how God has uh, led us and the way how God has expressed his character, how did he choose to save the mankind? He chose to save the mankind by suffering. Very strange way. You know, all these pictures about Superman and Santa Claus, and they don't represent God at all. And they're so far from that what God is. And God chose to take the pain and I think this is an important element in spiritual leadership that um, I can say that a church cannot be planted without pain don't even plan it that way <laughs> it's not gonna happen there's gonna be a lot of pain there and and pain on many different levels and 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 sacrificial love is painful and a church cannot be planted without sacrificial love I uh, I want to read to you from First Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians 12, when Paul gives a report about the actually the territory, exactly the territory where we are ministering now at the moment in in Turkey in Anatolia, and this is how the gospel came to Turkey in the for the first time. And I like reading this. It's not so um, encouraging, but in the same time, it's very comforting. Um, from Second Corinthians 11, he gives a report about his ministry in verse 23. He says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes, above measure in prisons, more frequently in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Have you ever been re <laughs> beaten with rods? I mean, Paul was three times. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles. 
in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. That's spiritual leadership there. <laughs> That's uh, like very real description of that. And 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 it's important part of leadership is to find the the strength in this kind of suffering that it's not wasted suffering, you know. There's a lot of wasted suffering in the in the world when we suffer because of our sin, because of our stupidities, because of our lust or our flesh. You know, there's a lot of pain like that. But this kind of pain and this kind of suffering is not wasted. It's beautiful. It is God-like. It is something that God has experienced himself and he is giving us the honor to reflect on his character that way. Thirdly, a spiritual leader waits. This is referring to patience. That um, This is a spiritual characteristic that comes from God's training because true growth and, and genuine growth is very slow when it comes to spiritual matters and, and spiritual prosperity. And most of it is invisible. We cannot put our measurements on it. We cannot touch it. But we know that it is happening and it's happening deep. So in Hebrews 10:36, 36, uh, the writer says that you need patience in order to do the will of God. And obviously, you know, God's plan is very slow. Uh, I uh, live in Turkey, and 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 I always say this that I really think that it's like I'm so privileged, <laughs> and 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 it's just because it's God's plan for me. And I remember in the times when when we used to go to the Soviet Union, and we were praying that we would get in there, and and we were like looking for all possible ways and. Then, then I got in there, and then I was kicked out from there, in 1983. And, 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 and I just knew that it was in God's plan and it was under God's control. But I had such a desire to go back there. So for eight years, I was trying to get a visa, a, find a way to get there. You know, I, I tried from Japan, I tried from Hungary, <laughs> I tried from Turkey. You know, <laughs> through different ways just to get back there. And and it didn't make sense. And somebody said to me, you know, everybody's trying to get out from there. <laughs> Why are you trying to get in there? And I cannot explain it. But it's this love of God constrains us. It's just it's just God's God's uh, you know God's life in us that leads us that way. And and it 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 takes patience. And and in Turkey, I I just really. Eh, can say very honestly that I love that place and I love the people and and I have accepted this truth that 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 the way how God works it's not for me to know the times that God has said like in Acts 8 1 8 you know that that it's not for me to worry about that how fast it's gonna go how big it's gonna be but when the Holy Spirit comes to you will have power to be my witness and and that's what we are experiencing and 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 i kind of rest in that and i'm very happy that god has taught us that because um, even from the nature we know that if you artificially try to make a fruit grow very fast they look very impressive but the taste is horrible there is like no taste because the taste comes with time and it's a spiritual principle also and that's why we can say that that the work of God is is actually very slow. I was just having a conversation with someone, and we spoke about that how Christ is coming back, and then there's going to be a millennium. And we said, "How long is the millennium?" 
like thousand years. <laughs> it's like, and we looked at one another. Thousand years. <laughs> like, have we even experienced that? Like that sounds like a very long time. And it's true. It's a long time. Why? Why does God will? God, why will God take still one thousand years <laughs> to to you know see things happen on this earth and so on? Isn't that amazing? Something beautiful is going on here. Something beautiful is being formed in us. Something amazing is happening here. You know, in, in, in those trials, in those testings, in those disappointments, in those failures even, something beautiful is happening. Something that God believes is important. Something that we will bring to heaven with us from here. We will bring something and it's it's those moments when we when we are like God on this earth, when we experience God likeness and we forgive and we receive grace and we give grace and we love unconditionally and we take the pain of that love and make a commitment and we we, we stick to it and, and these are God's characteristics. And it's something supernatural. Also uh Spiritual leader number four I have here in my list is that he is a seer. He has a vision, and when we speak about a vision, it really means that that we see beyond the visible, that that we see that what is not there, and and that's what God has given us as spiritual people, is that uh, that He shows us His purposes and one of the strengths of our work around the world is that we have this uh, team concept which is an understanding of working together and and really experiencing and and expressing the body of Christ as a group of people we are like a mini church we are you know there and we function together as the body of Christ and it's a team and a team needs good leadership. If there is no leadership, it's not a team. Uh, and for the team leader, I just want to say something important here. Uh, you know, we believe in God's delegated authority, and we believe in, in God's leadership in the church, and we very much have learned to honor that because we see the supernatural, you know, design in it. And the, and the same way with the team. Um, and when you are a team leader, you see things that others don't see. And this is one of the things that has to be communicated with the team members and with the team leader. And I have been myself several times in situations that, that you know, I during the years, first of all, I have learned that, 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 God has given me just amazing team members. <laughs> like, I, it's amazing. Like, I always look at the team members and I say, that, who am I well, that I would even lead these people? Like, they are like, they are so much smarter. They are so much more gifted. And so they know and, and, and they are just God's gift. And, and I'm there by God's grace leading them. But God also has given me a gift to see something that they don't see. And I don't want to make it sound strange or anything, but it is actually amazing. And I have been several times in a situation with my team members when I, they just talk about something with me and, and I can just say that, listen, you just have to trust me as your leader, you just have to trust me as your pastor, that I see here something that you don't see. And, and I believe in that. I, I have seen that work in practice that that God gives a vision for the leader, for the church, for the team, and, and, and it's supernatural. And uh, often the leader has no clue himself what's going on, but he's functioning in it. If he's a spiritually minded person, he's functioning in it. And, and he sees what is going on, and he sees maybe the bigger picture. He sees... Uh, those correlations that others don't see because it's given to him as a leader. Usually I, I, I say that, um, that having a vision, it means actually like, you know, 
asking these questions like you know that um, uh, we ask basically three questions but actually it can be extended to six questions <laughs> but basically three questions we say like you know where are we going to then secondly how are we getting there and thirdly are we getting there but besides that, we could also ask questions before those three questions. We could say, where have we come from? Where are we at? And then comes, where are we going to? How are we getting there? And are we getting there? And as a spiritual leader, you are all the time involved with that kind of thinking. You are willing to hear from God and you expect to see direction from God and the worst thing that can happen is that you are on a team where the team leader is not leading and he doesn't have a vision that's like nominal team life <laughs> it, it's not spiritual life but if there is a spiritual leadership the team leader will have a vision and will see the things that God shows him. And it's not always so definite, you know, like you remember when Paul was shipwrecked and they were, God gave him a promise that, that he will, God will give him all those who are with him on the boat. And, but, but he had been given the promise, but they had not seen land yet. So Paul is in that, like, you know, place where he is talking to the people and some men try to escape the boat you remember that and he's talking to them and he keeping his eye on the situation there and in the same time he's keeping his eye like you know and he's saying like you know soon we will hit an island soon we will hit an island but he sees just fog you know and he's saying soon we will hit an island and he's keeping his eye <laughs> <laughs> in the same time on the boat and, and looking at the situation and, and the power struggles there and who is trying to escape and so on and, and he's keeping his eye on them and he's saying also and we will hit an island, we will hit an that was his confession and yes an island they did hit you know and it was in God's plan he had given that promise he was a visionary in that sense that he saw something that he didn't see naturally but by faith he saw it and he was leading. He, became, he was a prisoner. He became the leader of the whole operation. He was a prisoner. That was God's plan, great plan. And then lastly, I want to just mention one more thing about a spiritual leader is that a spiritual leader initiates. He's not afraid of that. And if he doesn't, he is really limiting God. But when he initiates, he is always looking for new platforms, new, new things, new channels of growth. Because we are growing in a mystical way. We are growing in God's way. And when we grow in God's way, it's very difficult to measure because it can be measured only by faith or none of the earthly measurements, of course, apply. It's amazing to think about the church, how we are actually all priests, we are all royal priesthood, we are all, in that sense, leaders, and we are very responsible for that. But I think that it's amazing when, when leaders function together, when we are actually a team of leaders, when we all have that, that humility that we discern the gift of God, we discern the, the word of God, the message of God, and, and we function together. Like I have a great team in Istanbul and 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 there are some faithful people there both men and women and and i see them like you know uh, like we are all leaders we are praying together and and i just i just love the way how they are they are like um, extremely mature people <laughs> i'm just so impressed by them because uh they they um 
are spiritually oriented people and they don't worship me as their leader i'm very happy about it most of the time you know and 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 they have the freedom to 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 talk to me and i need to listen to them the most stupid thing for me to do would be not to listen to them because they see also things that i don't see and 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 we together we are in god's plan there and and we honor one another's call and and it's an amazing privilege to work together like that. And these are my thoughts about leadership. And we have time for a couple of questions or comments. So, so let's open it for that. Who has the first comment or a question? Or complaint? Yes. Sure. <laughs> God is paying us right now for our trials and tribulations, everything that we are going through in life today for the kingdom. You know, it's like he's shaping the molding into this role of research that you, you know, that you spoke about. And although we can't see it from the natural eye, you know, it's like, you know, you say that, you know, spiritual needs has got to look beyond that. It's like a supernatural comprehension that God gives us, you know, that we can't see it now, but each day we are more spiritual, I guess, as the Bible says, we are being formed into his image. Yeah, well, um, what I meant is that I wanted to emphasize this, that God is preparing us for eternity, for heaven, um, Yes, also for the future days, of course, and, and in God's plan, we are growing together and, and we will mature in our faith and we will be given more responsibility and, and more talents and, and that's the way how it works. But we just have this trust that, you know, if we sow in the spirit, we will reap in, in due time, like in Galatians 6, it says that we will reap. And, and I think about it this way, that maybe we will reap in heaven which is, I wouldn't, I cannot think of a better place to reap than, <laughs> you know, reaping in heaven, because there are a lot of things that maybe I'm doing in this lifetime, and no one even knows, like, you know, and I like that idea of having this kind of, uh, uh, you know, ministry also, that is like, you know, that I'm doing it quietly, and no one even knows. You know, I... Uh, my mother passed away this this spring and 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 she had a beautiful death she um, she was a mother right she is a mother and 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 her love for us children was so amazing because she had uh, had leukemia for a long time and we didn't know she didn't tell us and uh, and she wanted to spare us so <laughs> so she went to another city for checkups and 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 we didn't know and then one day she said um, that that oh i have to go to the other city for 7 days for a checkup so my sister who was uh, there you know near to her so so she called her and said what are you talking about and she said oh i'm just going for a routine checkup so my sister called the hospital and, and and the hospital, they said, you know, your mother has cancer, leukemia, hasn't she told you? And we were all shocked. You know, we all flew home, we were all there right away next day, you know, and, and we were like, Mom, what are you, what are, why are you doing this to us? Why don't you tell us? And she was just being a mother, you know, loving us. And, and then I had some beautiful days with her. I was just in the hospital reading the Bible to her and praying together. And she asked me that, please pray, pray that, you know, that, that I would not suffer long, that I, would, I could just go and be with Jesus. And, and we prayed together, and, and then next week she went to be with Jesus. And it was so beautiful. I, I was so happy and so proud of my mother that she died so much. But, but then when the funeral came, we were so amazed because all kinds of people showed up that we had never met or had never seen and and we found out that that my mother had been ministering to them 
know, helping them going cleaning up their houses and so on and so on. It's beautiful. It was so godly. And I was so proud of her again. Like, you know, that that's the kind of fruit that we want to bear. We we want to just do that what we are called to do. And and do it as much as possible. Why not? I mean life is an adventure. It's like full of that kind of opportunities. We don't need any titles for that. We don't need any money for that. Just let's do it for God's glory. And we will reap. It will be beautiful. And I think that on the mission field also, that's what it is like, you know. It's not only that what you hear in the newsletters. <laughs> I mean, the newsletters, I'm all for them and so on. But of course, we cannot write the real stuff in the newsletters. You know, it's obvious. Anyone thinking person understands that. So... So they have to be fixed a little bit and, and more like, you know, hero type of letters. But, but, but there's a lot of stuff that, can, that doesn't make it to the newsletters. But it's very real and, and a lot of those kind of things that will be revealed in eternity and, and we'll be reaping together and we will be reaping with joy, right? Yeah. Any, one more question. Let's have, yes. Thank you, Pastor. Go ahead. Thank you for tonight. About what you were saying about a servant, uh, I mean, a leader being nothing. I thought of how God always said, you know, He didn't come to be served, you know, but to serve. And that charity, you know, God's love, uh, and everything else is nothing, you know. Everything else is symbols or clanging things or whatnot, but, you know, a leader should have that love, you know, like you said, his character, broken character. But I just wanted to thank you for that message. Thank you. God bless you. We will have a break of 10 minutes, and then there will be another class. Okay? God bless you.